We kind of did this mix to Backbone and we think you guys might like it. <laughs> Well, you know, and in particular, the experience with Let Your Backbone Slide, the way it sort of rolled out was we had, there was an original version to the song right, right. that was later remixed and the remix became the single. Yeah. Um, but I remember the night that the producers, Peter and Anthony, called me and said um, they had a really unique way of communicating. You know, they would say, we kind of did this mix to Backbone and we think you guys might like it. <laughs> and um, I know when Wes and I heard it, I personally, like, was tearing up at how amazing it was yeah. and I know Wes knew what it was because um, he was very sp specific about um, he knew the anatomy of the hit right and um, I remember hearing that make that remix and being really excited with its potential and, and uh, the groundbreaking feeling that we felt um, before actually breaking that ground and I know I'm not alone but I can remember exactly where I was and exactly what was happening, who I was with the first time I heard that song. You wow. know what I'm saying? And it, it, I was at Dufferin and Lawrence. Maestro is such a great guy, and he, I remember writing about him performing at, uh, at a fan's wedding a couple of years ago, and he's still in the Canadian community. It's amazing how Canadians are amazing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you're absolutely right. I, I think we come in a package of humility and grace and appreciation. Um, you know, Wes, Wes personifies all those attributes, so, yeah, absolutely. And he had yeah. to have a friend to, to get him from somewhere, too, right? Yeah, you know, and I that was that. good people. You know? Yeah, yeah, you, you know, he's, he's a good judge of character, and um, the, you know, to be able to facilitate the mm -hmm. things that he achieved was a real joy for me. At, at a time when Rascals and, and Swollen Members and Maestro and all those bands were at the forefront of Canadian music and the growing, uh, you know, because Maestro created the, the Juno category, for, you know, his own Juno category. That was amazing. That was just a breakthrough. Can you tell me what it like, just transport yourself back, back in time. What was it like during that time capsule? Well, you know, during those times, it was incredibly exciting. Yeah. But you're also learning as you go because right, it, right. there's no precedence to follow. Mm -hmm. um, so when we did see the emergence, um, well, first of all, Wes was a standalone somewhat. And then the emergence of other acts like the Rascals who toured with, we did shows with them and so forth. Saul Guy reached out as an entrepreneur who was their manager and said, you know, I want to tour with you guys, want to open for you guys when you come on the West Coast, those kind of things. Um, and then when you, you're going to different parts of the country and you're being appreciated by fans, yeah. um, you know, when you think of it from a pre-social media standpoint, these aren't followers, yeah, these true. are fans, yeah. right? Um, you know, watching the other acts evolve and more content go to radio and to video and so forth was encouraging because uh, we knew to some extent we had paved a bit of a road for more to follow and my you know i've always worked on the behind the scenes portion and tried to make sure that the infrastructure for the music yeah. grew with the music itself yeah. and its popularity so um that's been where i found a lot of my um which where i cut my teeth so to speak yeah. and um yeah it was a very exciting time did you ever feel pressure to create a platform because you are the central hub for a lot of the artists because they come to you for advice and all that sort of thing. Did you feel pressure to create 93.5 in the beginning? Well, it was positive pressure. I mean, I was part of a team first and foremost that, right, that right. launched 93.5. Um, but yeah, I understood the, the, the lack of a platform or an outlet for the music to be played. Um, on a commercial level, and I also recognize the need for it because the genre was growing. Um, most people don't know the history necessarily, but yes, we tried yes. three times to get 93.5 on air, or not 93.5, to get Flow on air, yes, which is yes. part of the parent company, Milestone Radio, that yes. Ken Charlie owns. And um, the goal was to launch, a, create a voice for black music and black people, um, understanding the, the culture of black culture, which is has no color to it right. is the most inclusive and most popular culture in the history of art like there's no question about it yes. when you add up everything from you know Michael Jackson James Brown yes. Little Richard Dana Ross Motown the whole thing yes. and you look at the impact of that on on music as a genre yes. as, as, a, as a discipline you know 
you know for a fact that there's demand for it outside the community as well as within but the voice part obviously was very community specific and um, yeah so when we recognizing that I, I, I basically came in and said I'd like to lend my support I work with this artist named Maestro we've had some success and we think our voice and presence in this project would, would have some positive influence so that was really the the impetus for it so as far as pressure I put pressure on myself to do the things that I think I can achieve um, no matter how challenging they are I have to believe in myself and believe that I can attain those goals. You can find all of Farley Flex's initiatives in this week's article in the description below and as always be graceful. Thank you so much and, and we hope we wish you the best.